Okay, so remote desktop on Raspberry Pi is officially out of beta now. So Raspberry Pi Connect, which I've actually got running on this Android phone, which is mirroring on this screen. Uh, this is a laptop. I've also got it running on my MacBook. So if I move my mouse, you can see my mouse pointer moving around here. And if I hit say home, it will change it on all of these screens because they're all connected up. So this is my iPad connected up. And also this is a Linux device. Well, it's a Windows device, but it's running Linux on this NVMe drive. So you can see this is connected as well. If I drag this up to the top and go full screen, you can see that it's working. And if I just do a search, let's go with BMX. And they're all doing it at pretty much the same time. So they're all connected up to my Raspberry Pi upstairs, a Raspberry Pi 5, which is this one, which is basically connected to my printer. It's not usually sat on my printer, but I put it on the top just to show it. And this is accessible from anywhere in the world. So what I have to do is go to the right website and I can get access to it. And all of this is completely free to run, apart from your electricity and your broadband. I can also use this with my TV. So this is my iPhone. If I drag down and pick AirPlay as an option. So the TV supports AirPlay, but I've also got an Apple TV box. So either of these will work pretty much the same. You can see it's come up on the screen. I've got a keyboard dongle plugged in and I've got my Logitech keyboard. So now we go to the web browser and just put it in landscape mode. I can now move my mouse around and select the Raspberry Pi website. I could put this as an icon on the main screen and just click on that. And you can see I have my printer Pi here, connect, screen sharing, and here we are. Unfortunately, this doesn't go full screen like it does on the iPad and also all the Windows devices and everything. But if I click on the apps here, you can see that I can launch things. So say for instance, I wanted to do something with Raspberry Pi configuration. All of that works. If I go back to the browser, that comes up. I can even access my NAS drive, which is on this same network. So from anywhere in the world, I can access the NAS drive that I've got and play around with any of the apps on there. It, it just is a great system. It doesn't work the best with a phone, as you can see, because just because of the way it shows up. But I wonder what the TV web browser does, if it does. Let's give it a go. So if I take this mouse dongle, plug it into my TV instead. So now if I press the Windows key, that takes me back to the LG menu. So to clarify, I'm using this mouse and keyboard that I showed before. Uh, and you can move around with the apps and everything on this. So let's try the web browser. And if I do connect dot Raspberry Pi, you can see it's already been connected before. Sign in with Raspberry Pi ID. Connect via screen sharing. And there we are. So how does it work on this? It actually works fine on the TV, look. So if I was to go to pictures, okay, appears to have crashed. But if I try on my MacBook, so connect via screen sharing, let's see if it's still running. Yeah, so the Pi's still running, look. And if I double tap on that, then that pulls up the image. So it's still working, so the browser in the TV isn't up to it, really. That's a shame. But other TVs, you know, if you've got an Android TV like a Sony, uh, then you'd probably find it be absolutely fine. This is my Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, which is running MotionEye OS on the SD card. I'm powering it from the mains, but I've often powered this from a power bank as well. But this is connected to my local Wi-Fi in the house, so I can access this camera from anywhere via the Pi using Raspberry Pi Connect. So I'm now on a Raspberry Pi in my kitchen, so if I start the browser, and go to the Raspberry Pi Connect website. It remembers the sign-in details. And again, I can do connect. And let's go full screen. So this is the Pi all working fine. And I do like the way it does the little red dot. Um, so if it goes slow at all, then wherever you click the red dot is where the pointer will click. And it's just a really useful thing if you've got anything lagging.
So if I go to the browser, I've got my motion eye camera here as a shortcut. And it launches. Now the reason it's pink is because this is a uh, infrared camera. And if I appear on the camera, you'll see the frame rate isn't brilliant, but it works. And it's nice to have that sort of access without having to make Motion Eye available everywhere. So this is just on my local network. But because I'm using Raspberry Pi Connect, that makes it more useful. And that works the same for anything local on your network. So for instance, my I've got another NAS drive. So the one I was showing just now, the Ugreen one, is the newest one I've got, but I've also had this WD My Cloud for ages now. So if I go to go and network, and this is my NAS drive, WD My Cloud. And I've actually got a separate USB drive plugged in, but this is also the WD My Cloud. And I've got access to all of that from wherever I am. And if I need a file or a game or anything like that, I can email it to myself. I can upload it to a file sharing system. I just have access to everything. I've got all my photos on here as well. So it's just very, very handy to use. So let's disconnect from that. And I'm back on my Pi locally now. And let's just have a look at the Raspberry Pi website because this software has just been made uh, official, so out of beta. It's been just over a year since we launched the Raspberry Pi Connect beta, giving simple remote access to your Pi straight out of the box from anywhere in the world. Install base of over 100,000 devices. So this is version 2.5. So here you can see smarter wake-ups, data efficient connections in version 2.5. So before 2.5, the Connect client software running on Raspberry Pi would continually poll Raspberry Pi service for a request to connect. With version 2.5, the Connect client now holds a single long-lived HTTP connection to a Raspberry Pi server. Now when you click the Connect button on the Raspberry Pi on connect.raspberrypi.com, an event is broadcast to the device to wake it up and start the process of establishing a connection, which is excellent. And they've also got an optimized heartbeat for leaner dashboard updates. The Connect client sends heartbeats to Raspberry Pi servers periodically and also on startup and shutdown of a device. And in response to changes to its internal state, for example, the user disallowing screen sharing via CLI would trigger a heartbeat. This information is then used to keep your dashboard on the connect.raspberrypi.com up to date. So before version 2.5, the Connect client would send four heartbeats in rapid succession. And with 2.5, these heartbeats are now debounced and users should see many fewer requests to the Connect API outside of connection negotiation. So it's compressed as well to make it 50% smaller. And if you want to update, you're just putting this into terminal. So if you're already running Connect, which I already was, and I've got a separate video on how to set up Connect. That was based on the beta version, should be pretty much the same. Mainly it's just creating an account. And then when you go to this site, you're just logging in. And then on every new Raspberry Pi, when you click on the Connect icon, this purple one here, it will get you to sign in and you can add another device. And it says here you can, I think in the docs it said you couldn't use Raspberry Pi Lite without a graphical user interface, but it says that you can. And if I want to use it without a graphical user interface, obviously the OS you've seen, mine is running a graphical user interface. But if I go back to it and sign in, connect via remote shell. And so it's going to be a lot more responsive because it hasn't got to relay so much information back. And if you wanted to just do updates and so on, just really, really useful for that. And I can't remember if I've got P-Sensor on there. What happens if you do P-Sensor without GUI? Okay, have I not installed it? Because it's really hot here today and uh, it doesn't have any active cooling. You saw it earlier on in the aluminium DeSalvo case. So let's install that. Yeah, it's obviously it's more snappy with the, just the terminal. And then if I run PSensor without a GUI, what happens? Okay, so once a graphical user interface, so what I'll do, close that and then do screen sharing. So now if I try and run PSensor, what temperature are we running at? 48 degrees, pretty good considering it's pretty hot outside and I'm not using any active cooling at all. Okay, so hope all this helps. 
Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.